Here we're going to focus on what I consider some forgotten classics um, within the horror genre. And I think they're a little bit spread out. I know I'm, I'm going to probably get some contestation whether they legitimately fit the category, but this is my pick of a few classics that I think have been overlooked. First up is Joel Schumacher, and I know people immediately go to his vampire film. I don't have an issue with his vampire film. I actually do think he's a good filmmaker. But I'm really surprised they overlooked his other interesting entry into the horror genre. And as much as I like the vampire film, it's a little too silly at times. This one's a much, much more decidedly serious take. And it's a pretty intriguing premise of these young people and how they want to experiment between the line, between life and death and how they essentially experience the afterlife or at least what they think is the afterlife it's not the usual horror film there's no monster in the usual sense though we do get quite a lot of scares and i think very well done very well paced it's got a lot of uh, the schumacher alumni we've got uh, julia roberts we've got Kiefer sutherland so it's a real summing up of his forces over the years and Again, from one angle, you can kind of dismiss the whole thing as a lot of cheap camera tricks. And that's true if you know more and more about cinema. You're going to be like, oh, that wasn't that interesting. That was just playing with colors and things like that. But I think if you just let yourself go and just experience it at the visceral level, it's a very, very powerful and intriguing premise that they really play out, I think, fairly well. It even got a remake recently, so I haven't seen the remake yet. Um, I'll probably do it, try to do a compare and contrast later. Next up is Prophecy with Christopher Walken. And I know Christopher Walken gets a lot of criticism for, um, I guess you want to say he's very prolific. He puts out a lot of material. But I think overall, given how much he gives out, the quantity and quality are pretty evenly matched. And this is a great case where we have a real, real twist because you know nothing about the story. You're going to be kind of like confused for a long time, but halfway when twist is revealed, it's really, really effective because we have this image in our head that the perfect horror film is always going to be the demon versus the angel. And here we have a weird case where it's angel versus angel. And then suddenly the devil shows up with, uh, yes, that's Viggo Mortensen. Uh, it's, Mort it's not Mortensen, it's Mortensen. And he does an effective job. I mean, it's, yeah, he's just picture perfect as Satan. And again, we forget Satan was a fallen angel of sorts. And so it's a really intriguing way of... It's not, of course, super true to the Bible, but they do try to stay somewhat in the vein of these classical myths and try to have uh, certain rules and limits that the angels have to obey. Again, from one angle, it's a very minor thing. I mean, it's not expansive. The world is fairly small in terms of how Christopher Walken interacts with the world. But even within its limitations, I think they did a pretty effective job. It did, in fact, birth a kind of small franchise for a while. And in the 90s, I remember it really came up a lot, but now it's sort of just petered off and seems nobody has really much memory of it. But yeah, Prophecy is something that's worth revisiting. And finally, there's End of Days, which I know I'm going to probably get a little pushback because it seems like more of an action-adventure film because of Arnold Schwarzenegger's reputation. Arnold has not done that much horror, unless you're going to really stretch the definition. I guess Conan the Barbarian kind of counts as horror. I mean, Conan goes through literally horrific experiences, right? And he literally faces monsters. But End of Days is a decidedly weird one. You actually had quite a few of these films in the late 90s about the apocalypse and facing end times and millennialism, and this is sort of in the same vein. And when they do give you the whole premise, it is kind of pathetic. I mean, why would the devil want this of all things? It just seems like, for a so powerful being, this seems like a really small thing. But it is what it is. And I think when you look at the minor performances, they really save this film. I think Arnold is just fine, but when you look at the minor performances and the way they structure the whole film, it's really really intriguing and well done because for a while as always the devil gives you a seductive bargain and you're trying to think maybe it's going to happen maybe arnold is going to fall for it and maybe he's going to yield of course he's not you know he's a hero and you know it's but i do think they build it up very very effectively the ending is of course far too predictable the devil can't win um and i thought it was a little too cheap in how they find a way out of it but Again, the build-up, I think, was pretty well done. 
again, you wish they didn't layer the themes too explicitly. There's a little bit of his conservative politics. Um, again, he is on the right. I don't think Arnold has ever hidden he's he's a very political person, but I, I don't think it's too explicit, and you can kind of ignore it. And again, the minor performances, it's really shocking because, again, given that it's an Arnold Schwarzenegger film, you think they're going to pull back. They don't. They really, really go for some visceral imaging. So... Again, if you think this is a normal Schwarzenegger film, they're not going to go all out. No, this is a genuine horror film from beginning to end, and it really does, I think, pack a punch. All right, so these have been some forgotten horror classics that have, uh, I think, unjustly been overlooked. I understand, you know, Michael and Jason and Freddy get the lion's share of attention, but I think we want to focus our attention not just on the usual suspects. All right, this has been Parsley Examined Kubrick. Thanks for listening. If you like the content, please hit the like button and or subscribe. Please comment below. I welcome all criticisms. Thank you. Please have a good day.